Hey everyone, welcome back. Bigelow Reviews here. I am that dude, Brent Bigelow, and I have a new review for you, and that is Pierce the Veil's latest album, The Jaws of Life. This is Pierce the Veil's fifth studio album, and they've been around since like 2006. I've never really been much of a uh, Pierce the Veil type of a guy. I support that type of music, I like it. They're just not my favorite, not a go-to for me. I was more of a Falling in Reverse, All Time Low, Red Jumpsuit Apparatus, uh, Paramore, and like, uh, A Day to Remember. Those are more of my like type of bands that I kind of listened to uh, when this was a, a poppin' genre in the mid 2000s. Um, AFI also, uh, now I'm just naming bands. But a lot of these bands that I mentioned have been aging like fine wine. Um, one of them being uh, Pierce the Veil, that's the one we're talking about. Um, I think right now, even with Paramore, they just released an album. They've been aging like perfection, I think, at least Paramore has. So it's nice to see that Pierce the Veil is releasing an album for the first time in a while. Last time they released a record was 2016, the record entitled Misadventure. So it's nice to see, like I said, those older like 2000s like uh, emo punk scene bands are uh, out making music still and doing their thing and having fun with it. In comparison to the uh, 2016 album Misadventure like I already mentioned, and then this one, um, it feels like the band's gotten less hard but heavier, like sonically heavier. Like imagine, <laughs> imagine their last album was like a, a seltzer water, right? Like it just really, like it's kind of, you know, uh, it has that like hard bitterness and like that the bubbles and all that stuff but then it went from like being a seltzer water to like a pudding like it's heavy and dense the music itself is is a thing and it just when it weighs you down um that's how the new style feels i guess it's a really good a great i'll, I'll explain later on the production on this record does feel better than the last previous work like the the, the sound of this album and each song feel fuller they feel more layered, they sound great. The heavy end sounds great and just And then the high end just sounds hot, like nice and like doesn't hurt your ears, it doesn't sound like tingy or anything, it doesn't sound compressed. Overall, the album just sounds great production-wise. I think that's what I mean to say by a sentence like pudding. I don't know, it's a weird example. <laughs> even if you go back even further to the 2010's record, uh, Selfish Machine, um, this album doesn't get anywhere close to how hard that record is. Uh, the closest that it gets is the song Pass Their Nirvana, which is, I think, one of the, is the best song on this entire album. Uh, hands down, it's fantastic. I love the energy they have on it. They even have, it's like a, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's just a banger though. The, the way that song just drops and like just kicks in. Oof. One of my favorite songs I listened to the last few albums I have reviewed on this channel. Good ass song. And again, just talking about the full sound of this project on the uh, beginning track, the intro track to this entire album, the song uh, Death of an Executioner, the bass in there is just so low and just like ripping. And it sounds great. Like it actually it doesn't sound too distorted because it's it's low, man. It, those are some drop D, drop E notes. I don't play bass guitar. I think that's a register. I don't know. Compared to the last couple records I have mentioned that Pierce Avail has made, uh, this record really does have a wide variety of sounds, different type of genres. Like I said, it's not as heavy, it's just fuller. Pierce of Air really do flex their muscles on this record and just trying to do different things and, you know, extend the band's lifespan into the different genres and seeing how things go. For example, on the song Share Trauma, it's a piano-led, like, 21 Pilots-like song, um, and I do enjoy it. It's pretty great. The song Emotional Contact, is a kind of like tongue-in-cheek way of saying like I want you in my life and I want you to be important but at the same time I want you to be the one who is on my emergency contact if anything wrong does anything bad does happen to me you're the first person they call and I want you to be like in charge it's kind of a cutesy emo-y way of saying I love you girl I, I guess but in a way it's also like a twisted love story which is pretty cliche when it comes to emo love songs uh one song in here that I'm not feeling too much it just kind of feels generic plug and play um is the song damn the man it, uh damn the man save the empire that one I'm not too crazy about it just feels kind of like meh. the title track on here is pretty decent too the jaws of life uh, it has like this like really dramatic feel to it 
even with like the chorus out, boom, 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 wow, now, now. It's pretty great. Uh, awesome guitar riff. My only beef with this song, it does kind of sound like a, um, like a wannabe Foo Fighters type song. Like at least the way it's structured, it's so guitar heavy and it's just, it's good, but like, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a Pierce the Veil song, I guess. It feels too dad rock. The one thing I wish they would have done a little bit differently is I wish on the bridge where it got really soft, I would, that would have been a perfect spot for just an absolute killer guitar solo. We don't get enough guitar solos in music anymore. Um, that could, would have been great, just a little little cherry on top for the song. If it would have made such a decent song, like even better, just put, would have put it over the top and made it something special, especially with it being the title track. One song in here is So Far So Fake. Uh, it has this really weird guitar thing where um, like they're on like different tempos and they don't really line up that well. They're kind of confusing and um, disorienting. But the song does have a pretty nice chorus and a very smooth bridge. But uh, like I was saying, like in the verses, it does this really weird thing and I, I don't understand. Definitely complex and again, like I said, it's them trying to flex their muscles and see what will stick for the, you know, the, the, the years coming up. Last song on here, we have 12 Fractures featuring uh, Chloe Moriando, which I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. For a very experimental and like boundary pushing record for this band, um, this song kind of like falls flat for being like the last song. It's kind of a weird choice. It definitely is pretty boring and lackluster and uh, like especially if you're trying to cap off an album where you're doing so many new things. It would have been nice to kind of like really send home the message or even go back and just completely do what you used to be doing in the back of the day just to give the fans like, you know, that little instant gratification of, ah, Pierce the Veil's back. This is what we were listening to. But personally with this album, it, it it's not terrible, but it's also not great. It's like somewhere in the middle for me. Um, it's not offensively bad. The songs on here that I do like, I mean, I really only love one song, um, which is the Pass and the Nirvana. The other ones are okay. Just overall kind of a mediocre record, but it's nice to see that they are trying something different and kind of pushing those boundaries um, because I love when artists try to keep their careers going and trying different stuff, which is just uh, an exciting thing, period. So for this record, I'm feeling like a 39. Uh, but what do you think? Put your scores down in the comment section below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with all your besties. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Biggie out.